Great morning, Antioch. Great rising, Antioch. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. With this being our laity day, to, the, to Bishop Jackson, presiding prelate of the 6th Episcopal District, Supervisor Christy Davis Jackson, Esquire, Reverend Thomas Aristegall, presiding elder, Atlanta East District, Reverend Vandy Simmons, pastor, Antioch AME Church, Brother Matikan A. Makiti, Connectional Lay Organization President, to Sister Alfreda Brooks, 6th Episcopal District Lay Organization President, to Brother Jason Ferguson, Atlanta North Georgia Conference Lay Organization President, to Sister Carol James, Atlanta East District Lay Organization President, to Sister Leslie Vons, Antioch AME Church Local President, and to Sister Joy Comer, Antioch AME Church DOLA, Director of Lay Activities. I am your worship leader, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and my name is Leslie Vons. And it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to first of all wake up this morning. So that's why I corrected my greeting, because it is a great rising today. We did not hate to wake up. We could have went to bed last night. Sometime during the night, did not, God saw fit that he did not want to wake us up to see another day. But we are here. After the doxology, we will have our call to worship by Joy Comer. governed by democracy, aristocracy, and monarchy, amid a plethora of cultures, and yet believes in the same God. We are separated by miles, resources, agendas, political interests, and a pandemic. We have been kept together through the innovation of technologies, the willingness to transform to different ways of thinking, worship. a global witness ministry that transforms in real life ministry, reflective of a personal relationship with God. It is a complete renewal or shift of one's mindsets, beliefs, an entire way of being and behavior. Oh Lord, we see transformation by renewing of our minds and our hearts so that we may prove what is your good Living a global witness ministry that transcends goes beyond borders and boundaries. It is the charge and chance 
for us to extend ourselves beyond our comfort zone to communicate and create avenues that will span generations, open minds, and activate people to engage in an edifying work. Oh Lord, our prayers is to execute that is not A global witness ministry that liberates, frees one to be liberal in praise, service, and witness. In essence, it unters us for dull transitions and bind our imagination, creativity, and innovation, and conversely loosens our proclivity for boundless greatness. Oh Lord. We yearn for a liberating gospel spread across the world so that all humanity will come to know and exemplify living a global witness in the street that transforms, transcends, and liberates. Our opening hymn, Laymen now have thus assembled in thy blessed name, O God. Guide us in our true endeavor. Let the pathway that we trod give us strength to ever labor for thy cause. Give us strength to ever labor for thy cause. After the singing of the hymn, we will be led to the throne of glory by our first vice president, Brother James Simon. Good morning. 
as we bow our heads in prayer, I ask you to do two things. Number one, lift up somebody you know who needs prayer today. And also lift up somebody you know who celebrates today. For we come before the Lord to ask for his blessings, but we also come to celebrate his blessings. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Heavenly Father, Holy Father, we come before you this morning to honor, glorify, glorify, and lift you up. We seek your presence today, Lord, in this service. We seek your presence in our lives. We seek your presence in our every day. We come, we ask, and we thank you for your provision, everything we will need. We thank you and ask you for your pardon, the forgiveness of, of our sins. As we ask you, we ask that you help us to forgive others. And we thank you and ask you for your protection from the evil and the evil one, from all hurt, harm, danger, from the plague, the pestilence, the terror, and the arrow. Thank you, Lord. We come ask you to lead us, guide us, fill us spiritually, fill us mentally, fill us physically, Give us your daily bread so that we, we can say, Lord, we are full. We can't handle anymore. But Lord, give us what we need. And we give you joy. We give you a full life as you give us life. And as we worship, as we celebrate, as we fellowship, come now, Lord, lead us and guide us through this day. In this service, we ask for blessings upon each and every person in this sanctuary for our pastor, our staff, our choir. Especially today, Lord, I ask for your blessings upon our speaker who will speak on your behalf to give us your word. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. too excited. A lot going on this week, a lot going on the past couple of weeks, but that doesn't take away from what we are doing here today. As I look at some of the smiling faces to my left, to my right, I'm recognizing faces from all across the connection for this Our Lay Day. But I want to start with our special friends who are visiting with us for the first time. If you are visiting with us for the first time in this worship experience, would you please stand? Amen. Amen. The ushers are passing out visitors cards. Please fill them out and return to the ushers at the end of the service. We will use this for outreach and communication later on in the week. We thank you and be blessed. If you are a laity worshiping with us today, will you please stand? Amen. I see our past pair president, Sister Annette Curry, from the Connectional, I mean, not Connectional, excuse me, Atlanta North Georgia Conference Lay Organization. We have our current Atlanta East District Lay president, Sister Carol James and her husband, call them Pops. We also have some visitors who have come from St. Philip AME Church. And if I didn't recognize anyone else, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I am not going to get in trouble with my Sarah back there today. She snuck in on me and Mr. Sister Gloria Bird, Connectional Lay Organization Advisor and President Emeritus of the 6th Episcopal District. Thank you for coming today. We will now have our, still moving too fast. After service, we would like for everyone who is visiting, part of the lay, and if you want to join the lay, to please stay after service to take a picture with us. Thank you. Amen. Let us put our hands together for our lay organization annual day. 
and we get to hear from a young adult this morning, Sister Amy Beasley, member of St. Philip AME Church. Amen. I have two cards I want to share with you. The first one to our Antioch family. Whether you kept us in thoughts and prayers, gave a memorial donation, or helped out in any way, your love and kindness brought great comfort to Pastor Simmons from the Bridgewater family. The Deadweiler family truly thanks Pastor Vandy Simmons and the Antioch Church for their kindness and generosity in this time of bereavement. God bless you all, the Gwendolyn Deadweiler Rich family, amen. And now for our birthdays, as we prepare to celebrate those who have had one year around the sun, October 11th, Waynesworth Small, Brandon Ruffin, and Ernest Sims. October 12th, Nathan Spotsville and Marion Brown. October 13th, Jackie Andrew and Curtis Jones. October 14th, Martu Kilby, Denny Carr, Adriera Green, and Stefan Scott. Today, October 15th, Patrick Hughes. And on Tuesday, October 17th, Sharonda Jackson, Todd Rand, Wanda Willis, Rebecca Smith, and Maya Malines. Happy birthday to all of our Antioch members. The flowers on the altar today are in memory of Sister Rebecca Willis, amen. We have a lot of congratulatory uh, accomplishments to make this morning. Uh, the son of Miriam Causey, congratulations to private second class, Daryl Causey who graduated from avionic school with drone management skills of which less than 1% of the Army has attained. Congratulations to Brother Daryl Causey. And Sister Nakai Simmons, where are you Sister Nakai? Congratulations to Sister Nakai Simmons and Thrill High School, who recently won the Flag Football Invitational Tournament. Congratulations. Woo, flag football, y'all, flag football. And we want to extend a hearty Congratulations to the Hayes family this morning. Sister Nikki's cousin was just installed as the eighth president of Princeton Theological Seminary. Brother Jonathan Lee Walton. I'm not sure if you all understand the magnitude of this because us seminarians, we know if we're not at a black seminary. I have been mistaken for the maintenance at Yale Divinity School. If you've gone to Harvard Divinity School, Princeton Theological Seminary, any of them, there's not that many of us. So for the president, the eighth president installed at Princeton to look like me and you, that's amazing. <laughs> So we want to keep him prayed up. As we said this morning, new levels, new devils, right, Nikki? Keep him prayed up, because he's got a lot of people to face. October is Domestic Violence and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. In observance of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we will wear purple on fifth Sunday, October 29th. When are we wearing purple? On, and what color are we wearing? Purple. Okay, so don't come next Sunday with your purple on. We come in fifth Sunday, October 29th. What's next Sunday? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you want to don yourselves in some black and gold, go for it. The lay organization will meet tomorrow in person at Antioch at 7 p.m. 
If you're interested in joining the lay, you're welcome to attend the meeting tomorrow evening. The farmer's market coming this Saturday, October 21st from 10 to 1. Free fruits and vegetables are available to the community. And again, pastor's seventh pastoral anniversary celebration will be next Sunday at 10 a.m. Bishop Davis of the Second Episcopal District will be our guest preacher. Dinner will be served. Afterwards, suggested donation is $25. Pastor Simmons will serve as a panelist at Valdosta State University for a domestic violence discussion called No More Beautiful Lies, hosted by his sister, Terry Stewart, on Saturday, October 28th from 11 to 1. And there will be a virtual option. See your weekly updates for more information. Trunk or treat coming up on October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. here in the church parking lot. Come and enjoy the fun and the fellowship. Bible study is held every Tuesday virtually at 7 p.m. on the prayer line conference call and on Wednesdays in person at Antioch Manor at 11 a.m. All are welcome to attend. The Women's Missionary Society is collecting gently used blankets to distribute to the homeless from now to January. Please drop off here at the church, and we thank you to those who have already done so. Our grief ministry support group is held every Monday at 7 p.m. To register, the link is in the weekly updates. If you or you know of someone who may need our grief ministry, we are here to serve you. We will walk through the grief journey with you together. Antioch's Food Pantry. We still need volunteer van drivers. Please contact Sister Olu Boglin for more information. The Social Action Ministry is collecting teaching and learning materials for, for those in Liberia to support the most impoverished areas. Items can be dropped off here at the church. And please remember to submit your information for the Antioch Business Directory if you haven't done so already. The link is in your weekly updates. And please, if you are interested in volunteering for Big Brothers Big Sisters, please contact the Metro Atlanta office. We have several Antioch members who have been approved to serve as Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Please continue to pay close attention to our Stay Woke section in the weekly updates. We got to stay woke, church. There's information there to keep us, the black community, informed. So if you know of any banned black books or black-owned businesses that are not on the list in the weekly updates, please feel free to forward them to me. And it's time to vote. Early voting starts tomorrow. Early voting. October 16th through November 3rd. Friday, October 27th is the last day to request an absentee ballot. And election day is Tuesday, November 7th. Election day is when? All right, let us be prepared to make our voices known. And church, uh, the sound ministry can put up the text to join graphic Antioch will begin using mobile text alerts to communicate information to you quickly, like weather closings, power outages, or any other relevant information. The number is on the screen, 833-205-3445. Please text the word join and follow the prompts. Save this number in your phone. One day coming very soon, we will be sending a testing text to ensure that it is working properly. So probably this week, you will receive a testing text. Amen? And for all the ways to give, Cash App, PayPal, Givelify, drop off on Wednesdays from 3 to 5, mail into P.O. Box 808, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. And Pastor, we are turning it over to you, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
what a very special day to have someone baptized on this very special day. And so we're going to ask the family if they would come forward. Can you have a better day than the lay organization day? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, this is probably the most important time in the life of the church. It's, it's a statement. And especially when we bring our babies and our children. And as Methodists, we do believe in infant baptism. And the premise behind that is that the parents and our guardians have the right and the responsibility to offer their children back to God in whom they were created by. And so we are just excited. I think, that we, I think we have who we have here, Chase and Chance. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if I'm not mistaken, Chase is the oldest, right? Yeah, so we'll, we'll be starting with, with Chase. Amen. We have a few questions that we want to ask the parents. And, because right now you are speaking for them. Now this is what we believe, that they don't have to be baptized again. At some other date and time, they can come and acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But they can also tell whoever, well, this church or another church, that we already been baptized. We just want to, ex we want to acknowledge the Lord as our Savior in front of y'all. But but we know who we belong to. The deal was sealed by our parents. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let us. Who present these children for the sacrament of Christian baptism? Kaya. And Kuali. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you accept the responsibility to see that they be taught the nature and meaning of this holy sacrament? We do. We do. Will you, by personal example, live before these children a life that becomes the gospel? Will you encourage them to give regular attendance to the appointed means of grace, such as the ministry of the word, the public and private worship of God. We do. We will. All right. Y'all doing real good. In order that they may know these things better, will you read and encourage them to read the Holy Scriptures, learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Catechism, and all other things a Christian ought to know and believe to their soul's health in order that they may be brought up to lead a virtuous and holy life, remembering always that baptism does represent unto us that inward purity which inclines us to follow the example of our Savior Christ. We will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Will you teach them that Christ died and rose again for us? So should we who are baptized die unto sin and rise again unto righteousness. We will. Will you continually encourage the subduing of all corrupt affections and daily endeavor to see 
that they grow in virtue and godliness. We will. Man, boy, y'all on the same page. Chase, we're going to start with you. Come on, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Chase, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> nah. Chance, I know you'll be a little bit more cooperative. <laughs> hey. Amen. Look at that. Hey. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Bless you. All right. I got him. I got him. Amen. I got him. Amen. This chance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand, please. If you would, repeat after me. God, God. help us, help us. To, let to let our light, our light. So, shine. so shine before these children, before these children. that they would see, they will see. Our, good our good works and glorify, and glorify you, God, you, God, who's in heaven. In heaven. Help, us, oh God, Help us, oh God, to be there, to be there. For, them for them as they need us. Along this life journey, help us, oh God, not to judge them, but to love them, remembering that along this journey, there will be mistakes made along the way. But thank God for the body of Christ. We're in it. Together, together, forever, forever. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us all now pray as the Lord taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 We have some uh, certificates for Chase and Chance. Amen. Amen. In case somebody forget what happened during this time. This will, be a, this will be evidence of what took place Amen. in this space and time. God bless you. God keep Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They, the lay organization going to let somebody else do the money. Yeah. I don't know. We know what AME mean. Amen. Is he qualified? I think he is. Do we know how to beg and plead for money? 
<laughs> I hope so. He a steward. God bless you. We will now have our offertory appeal by Brother Charlie Stembridge. Good morning, my Antioch church family. It is good to see you all on this side, the land of the living, amen? First, I would like to acknowledge Pastor Simmons, Dr. Simmons, the ministerial staff, church leaders, my awesome choir, music team, sound team, members, families, and friends. Thank you all for joining us today. Everybody, I think that covers you all, everybody. Now, I was asked to do the offertory appeal, but let me go ahead and warn you, I am not a public speaker, so y'all just bear with me. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> but I, since I love my church family, I hesitantly accepted the, uh, the, the uh, task, okay? So with that being said, let me tell you how I got here today. Um, December will mark my seventh year of being a member here of Antioch. So every time pastor have an anniversary, I have an anniversary. And so that's how I remember my anniversaries, through pastor. So out of all of my time here, people, most people here know me as a Hey By member. Y'all like, what's a Hey By member? Joy, you know. <laughs> Lisa, you know. Hey By. Y'all will see me in the hall saying, hey, how you doing? And bye. Hey By member. Now, within the last year or two, I started intertwining and mingling with some highly educated, highly intelligent people, as Pastor would say. And one of those people is called, his name George Comber. And so that's why I'm here today, because of George Comber. And so, yeah, I'm calling it out today. <laughs> but let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. So Pastor has told you all in the past that I have an old soul. And I can't deny that I do have an old soul. And with that, I enjoy gardening. I, I love plants and flowers and getting my hands dirty. And so for you tinted colored people, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about what's in my garden. Also for my neighbors, so y'all don't have to drive by, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what's in my, in my, in my garden. I have some uh, peach trees, apple trees, blueberry plants, strawberry plants, blackberry plants, raspberry plants, elephant ears, roses, different types of flowers. And so one day I was tending to my garden. I got the great idea um, because my yard backs into the woods. And so I said, well, Charlie, you have all of these beautiful plants growing. Go into the woods and look for a money tree. And so you all know that there is no such thing as a money tree. That's what the old people told me anyway. But me being rebellious and challenging, I said, let me go look for this money tree in the woods. And so I wandered through the woods and looked around, and of course, I could not find a money tree. So the next great idea, I said, I said well, let me, Lord, let me go up here to Antioch and find one of their money trees. And so before you all say I was going to steal their money tree, I just wanted a little piece of the money tree. I was going to root it and plant it in my backyard. So I, I looked around, and I couldn't find the money tree. So I said, well, let me go talk to my highly intelligent, highly educated friend, Joy Colbert. Yeah, I'm picking on her today because she got me up here. And so I said, Joy, what a money tree is that? She said, boy, you crazy. You know ain't no such thing as no money trees. Now, that's the answer I got. Y'all would have got the highly educated response. Pardon me. I don't understand. I don't comprehend your question. That's what she would have said to you all. But, boy, you must be crazy. So I said, well, Joy, out of the seven years of being here, we've done so much at Antioch. We've revamped the fellowship hall with new carpet, new lights, new paint, and the cushions that you're sitting on. And then I said, Joy, you go down the hall, and when you see the beautiful carpet, you go down a little bit further, and you see the nicely renovated bathrooms. If you've had the opportunity to peep into Pastor's office, see, I'm way down, so I have to peep. But if you're able to look into Pastor's office, you can see that it's nicely done. You get to the fellowship hall, you can see that it's revamped. The nice security doors, and of course, when you drive up on the property, you're now um, um, driving on nice, smooth uh, pavement. And so I said, Joy, where are the money trees? And so she said, Charlie, you must be crazy. You don't lost your mind. That's what she told me. So I, she, I said, well, Joy, it got to be. And I got some money somewhere. Where's the money coming from? And she said, Charlie, we are Antioch money trees. We are the trees. We are the three T's that pastor always talk about. Tax, time, and talent. We are those three T's. So I started thinking about my garden. The same way that I spend time in my garden, the same way that I use my talent, the same way that I use my money, because I got to feed them and water them and get fertilizer. That's the tides. 
uh, they become beautiful plants. They produce pr beautiful fruit. My roses come out great. And that's the same way we are as this church. The more we use our three T's, the more we give, the more we can do internally. And as pastors say, the more we can do externally because we are the church for the what? Community. And we are dedicated to saving lives. So today I stand before you pleading and challenging you to use your three T's, tithes, time, and talents. Because the more you give, the more we can do. Now I'm almost done. I got three more points. Almost done. I told y'all I'm not a, a long speaker, so here we go. Number one, family, we need you. We need all of you. Wherever you stand, I just always some can't give, we understand that, and we are grateful to have you anyway. Some that can give, and some that can go above and beyond. Wherever you stand, we need you today. Not only this day, but every day. We are challenging you to do your best every day. Number two, I still think those money trees are at Joe Comer's house. And number three, Pastor, I want you to hear this loud and clear so I won't be back in here in this position again. I'm going back to being a Hey Bye member. Praise you all. Have a great Sunday. And let's take up this offering. We're going to start in the back, the rear of the church, in the directions of our ushers. And uh, we will go from there. Amen.
today, because we were not able to have our normal program, we would like to honor those individuals in the church who we will consider our unsung heroes because they come to church, they might not ever get recognized, they're not a part of the official lay organization, and I'll talk to you about that later, but you are important to us. As we get some help here. You're very important to us. So the Antioch AME Church Lay Organization was blessed to have seven ministries to submit their Lay Person of the Year and Young Adult. Now I know some of you may be a little confused because I did have some calls about this. Well, Leslie, why are you doing that now? I thought y'all already did that. You announced the winner for the Atlanta East District. So why am I submitting a name? You're submitting a name because I do want to recognize ministries. Without ministries, we still cannot get the work done in the church. And these ministries have provided a great work and need in the life of our church. So I'm gonna call our Dola to come up and help me pass out certificates. And as she was coming, I wanted to make it clear that our standard day of witness is the third week in October. And because of the district recognition that was earlier and the committee having to choose their representative earlier, therefore eliminating that element of surprise that we just spoke about. The individuals that are eligible to win, like I said, are the members of the organized lay. But yes, we did want to recognize you. We didn't have a prayer breakfast this year, but look forward to that reboot for next year. It's gonna be bigger and better beyond your wildest dreams because you deserve to be recognized. This certificate of recognition acknowledges that Sister Rosa McPherson Green has been recognized for outstanding ministry, ser outstanding service to the home ministry. element of surprise going on here today. Our next recognition, and you can still stand, sorry. I know that photo moment. Dorothy Reese has been recognized for outstanding service to the Greeters Ministry. As a side note, last year, I, my, my goal was following our 60th Episcopal District President, lay president was to reclaim along with retaining and bringing on new members. And Sister Dorothy Reese was one of those that we reclaimed back into the lay ministry. And so I'm so thankful that she is being honored here today. Sister Monica Malans has been recognized for outstanding service to Social Action Ministry. For those of you that do not know, the Social Action Ministry falls under the lay organization. So that was why I told our Social Action President, you're really a part of the lay. So I want you to sit with us and she provided some names for us today. So I'm very thankful for that and accepting her certificate will be her brother, Brother James Simon. Amen. Next, Audrey Williams 
has been recognized for outstanding service to the Performing Arts Ministry. Double W. Wayne Wesley, come on down, has been recognized for outstanding service to the media ministry. I'm gonna surprise you every time. Now this next recognition is very special to me. Uh, she goes above and beyond, and you're gonna hear more about her in a few minutes. But this certificate recognizes Nicole Pagan for outstanding service as a young adult to the Performing Arts Ministry and the Media Ministry. going to be moving to the honorees for the organized lay organization. And I say organized lay organization because we are a connectional organization of the AME church. As you saw in the litany, we are a church that spans 39 countries, five continents. These aren't just words that we put down just to be putting words down. We are speaking what we know. We just came back from Chicago this summer and we met with all of those delegations and it was a wonderful opportunity to meet other people that you might not even come across in your daily walk of life. But the real reason for our award is we would like to select a lay person who is actually doing the work of the organized lay organization. So how do you get recognized for that award? Well, when I selected the candidates, and this is for the lay person and the young adult, the nominee should have experience working and serving in the lay organization. I had to describe the nominee's work in conjunction with other programs. You saw those ministry awards that were just given. Describe the nominee's work with any outreach program. Describe how the nominee strives to be hospitable and exemplify godly values, such as godly attributes and dedication, dedicated, excuse me, diligent, and works well with others. Describe how the nominee participates in Bible study, Sunday school, Christian ed, and lay meetings all across the connectional. List any awards or honors that the nominee received in the past five years in the church or the community. So to present the awards for our, you can do this in any order, lay person of the year and young adult of the year is our president of the 6th Episcopal District Lay Organization, Sister Alfreda Brooks. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to play president of the 6th Fiscal District at my own home church. 
And it gives me great honor to be able to stand here and to make these present presentations. Funny thing about this is you may not realize there are six conferences within the state of Georgia, and each one has an organized lay. And here in the Atlanta North Georgia Conference, we have four districts. We have a north, south, east, and west. To receive this honor is amazing, outrageous, and marvelous. Uh, winners from our church alone have been Sister Swafford and myself. To receive this honor to represent the Atlanta North Georgia Conference is no laughing matter. Our president, Sister Leslie Vaughn, has explained to you what the criteria are. So our winners went against other churches, or will go against other churches, um, because we represent the Atlanta East District. In January, the overall winner, based on the criteria, will be crowned in our January banquet. So we hope that many of you will be able to attend with us. So without further ado, I know Pastor got so excited last Sunday, and um, he spilled the bean. But Pastor, when you're excited about the Lord, what can we say? So it gives me great honor to, ex uh, to give these awards. The first one we will give is to the layperson of the year for the Atlanta East District. None other than our own director of lay activities, Sister Joy Comer. person of the year presented to Joy Comer for dedicated service to Atlanta East District Lay Organization. President Carol James, presiding elder Reverend Thomas Stegall, presiding prelate Bishop Reginald T. Jackson. Sister James, would you please come and be with us as we, we give out this award. Amen. President James, you can, somebody can take the picture, you come on up here. Taking the picture from the up part, don't worry about that. Sister Coma. I just want you to know that this is her first year and she has been extremely busy as a member of the lay organization. If you travel with the members of the AME Church, it's nice to see other people, new people, come out and learn about the church. Sister Comer has done that. Amen. She has Amen. been to everything that the bishop has held. Amen. And she will represent Atlanta, I mean Antioch, at the district meeting for the presiding elder for the Atlanta East District. She is now a steward of the church, so she has not stopped since she started working with the lay organization. The young person that we were, because uh, Pastor has already told you who that is, and she has worked very diligently. It's been a, a long fishing journey trying to wheel her in as a member. And if you travel with us, you will note that it's very difficult to get young adults to be a part of anything in the church. It doesn't matter what it is, but to have a young lady come and be a part of the lay organization gives me great joy to present the Young Adult of the Year from presented to Nicole Pagan for dedicated service to Atlanta East District Lay Organization. Sister Carol James, President, Reverend Thomas Seagull, Presiding Elder, Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, Presiding Elder.
Just one more note to say that, as we said before this past July, we were in Chicago for the Connectional, which brought everyone across the country, overseas, and wherever. In 2025, Atlanta will host that convention. We pray and hope that you will be a part of our endeavors because we want to show them a touch of Georgia. Keep Georgia on your mind. Thank you. My president got real excited because she forgot to do the local award. And so the funny story with this is when um, Brother Simon went to get the awards, he said, um, I need to place an order for Antioch AME Church for Lay Person of the Year, Joy Comer, and for young adult, Nicole Pagan. Well, when he got there, they said, the order is ready. First thing I said was, he was there to place the order. So, Madam President, we kind of knew that they had already won because he went to go get the awards. But I'm glad that we found a different award so that they will have, won't have matching bookends. But we now have our late person of the year and our young adult of the year. Please come back to receive your award from Antioch African Methodist Episcopal Church. We are so proud of you and our president is already saying it. All right, so I apologize for delaying service, but this is very important. And I would like to do this before we get to the preached word, because after we have the offering, well, sometimes if you go to some of these meetings, they do all of this, they'll do the preaching, and then they want to take up some money. So I'm glad we did the AME tradition different. We did it before, did the presentation, and now we will have the introduction of our speaker, by our local Young Adult of the Year and now Atlanta East District Lay Organization of the Year Young Adult, Sister Nicole Pagan. Good morning. So when Auntie Leslie came and asked me to do this, she thought I didn't know this person. But I do. So. I have the honor of introducing our speaker, and I'm very excited for this. Amy A. Beasley, daughter of Jackie and Cassandra Beasley, has been a lifelong member of St. Philip AME Church in Atlanta. She has been active in the life of our church since the age of two, as a member of the YPD from age two to 21. Now she is a member of the organized lay where she serves as Atlanta North Georgia Conference Young Adult Representative. Amy has sang, danced, ushered, and even done three sermonettes. She's active on all levels of the Connectional AME Church. She's also active in her community, attending and participating in conferences, missions, and meetings across denominations. Outside of church, Amy has her own business, AB Customs, where she creates custom and personalized gifts such as t-shirts, hoodies, bracelets, mugs, and cups, all handmade with love. Additionally, she is passionate about dressing, styling, and empowering plus-sized women. 
which serves as her day job until she can make it her career. Her favorite scripture is Romans 8, 18. Ladies and gentlemen, after you hear from Adrian Johnson and the family, <laughs> the next voice you will hear is from Ms. Amy Beasley. Can we give God another hand clap of praise in this place? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, be blessed. Neighbor, be blessed. Come on, say it one more time. Neighbor, be blessed. to encourage you this morning. Is that all right? Y'all ready? Be blessed. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever. Be blessed wherever. This life leads you. This life leads you. Let me encourage you.
you pray for me and watch watch God change things good morning good morning I am Amy Beasley the Atlanta North Georgia Conference young adult representative and I am extremely grateful for this opportunity. I greet you on behalf of St. Philip AME Church, 1L, no S, and our pastor and executive minister team, the Reverend Dr. Anton L. Wood and Lady Shawana L. Wood, as well as Brother Jason Ferguson, president of the Atlanta North Georgia Conference Lay Organization, and Miss Andrea Gray Mason Dola. To Miss Leslie Vines, Miss Joy Cromer, and Pastor Vandy Simmons, I sincerely thank you for inviting and granting me access to your pulpit to speak to your congregation and lay organization today. Special shout out to 6th Episcopal District Lay President, Ms. Alfreda Brooks. Thank you for taking interest in young adults, especially me. And thank you for just being you. I am thankful, grateful, and blessed to be standing here. Antioch is a church in which I have deep family ties. My beloved grandmother, a praying grandmother, the late Ruby Jakes was a longtime member of Antioch. I remember many mornings at her home where her phone would ring or the doorbell would ring and it would be her pastor, the now Bishop Stafford Wicker. I remember Sunday mornings where she would be putting on the biggest and the baddest hats and getting ready for service. Or any holiday when my very large family would be preparing and deciding where we would want to worship, she would say, I want y'all to come to my church. And from then on, I have always credited myself as an associate member. Now, Pastor, I'm not sure if that's a thing, but. She was a true church lady and I credit her as well as my grandfather, the late Samuel Jake Sr. and avid AME, as the reason I've been active and will continue to be active in the life of the AME Church. Through connections, I was even able to come dance at Antioch with the Daughters of David Youth and Young Adult Dance Ministry. This came at a time where I was ready to give up on dancing for the Lord. It helped restore my passion meet some wonderful young ladies, and grow. 
To which I thank Minister Franklin and Ms. Shalala Clark for that invitation. And y'all, Reverend Vandy Simmons even married my cousin Samara to her husband. So like I said, the family ties run deep. I would like to thank everyone who thought it not robbery to join me today and help me pack the pew as I deliver my very first speech outside of my home church. Thank you to my parents, Jack and Cassandra Beasley, my godparents, the Cannons and the Fergusons, my aunts, uncles, and cousins in which I love so much. Prophet, I love you. My best friend, Lauren, my brother, Daniel, my church mother, Milana, my friends that have become family, my church family, especially my mom and pop, Cisco, happy anniversary. Ms. Carol James, the Atlanta East District President, thank you. And the St. Philip Lay Organization, led by Ms. Patsy Lewis, I thank you and I appreciate you. A few months ago, President Vons got me on the phone after a weekend of playing phone tag. If anybody knows me, they know Amy don't answer no phone. <laughs> When we spoke, she extended this gracious opportunity to which I immediately accepted, totally unlike me. Contrary to popular belief, I prefer, I prefer not to speak publicly. If I have the choice, I usually don't have the choice. She stated the theme would be our connectional lay theme and I could come from the young adult perspective and also use this as a way to begin getting my plan in action for 2025. What plan, you may ask? Well, I plan to be a part of the reason why the next Connectional Lay Biennial hosted here in the 6th District has the most young adults registered to date, with the 6th District being a key player as the host. So prayerfully, this will be the start. Now let's get to work, let's get to work. The month of October marks the yearly celebration of Lay Witness Sunday, the reason we are here today. As a lifelong AME, I can always remember the lay organization. I wasn't quite sure of what they did, but I always knew they were around. I knew that there were some lay legends at my church, like Miss Annette Curry, Miss B. Williams, Miss Frida Minga, and especially Miss Gloria Bird. But soon, I come to find out what exactly they were about. After what I thought was a devastating blow, I actually realized it was the beginning of a new and necessary season. And at 21 years old, I joined the lay organization and I counted all joy. As I traveled around the state of Georgia, around the connection, I found out the lay were the teachers, the movers, the shakers. They were the ones that kept our history, traditions, and principles alive. They meant business, both our father's business and the business of our church. According to page 499 of the 51st Doctrine and Discipline of the AME Church, the mission statement states the lay organization of the AME Church is commissioned to teach, train, and empower its members for lay ministry, global leadership, and service following the tenets of Jesus Christ. The purpose of this organization shall be able to organize and train the laity of the AME Church so that laypersons may maximally utilize their God-given abilities and skills to improve and extend the kingdom, to create happiness, peace, and harmony among its members. I believe I'm prepared, and that's what I'm gonna try to do today. As a 26-year-old, I initially thought of this, some of the coolest sayings that I could, that would be relevant and that I could come up here and say as the subtitle for today. Thought about, well, what if I said, the marathon continues? Or what if I came up here and said, God did? What if I said this was the victory lap? All of these could relate. I even began writing a message, but I just couldn't tie it together. I felt restless and began to question if I was ready for an occasion like this. I just couldn't figure out why I was drawing a blank. All I could think about was what would reach the laity 
while leaving the other congregants with a word that would keep them encouraged this week. What is the bottom line? Then it hit me. One thing that has always been evident to me while being active in the AME Church, or just being us, we love a good thing. We love a good thing, from family reunions, to birthday parties, to church. We love a good thing. I can remember back to my days as a young YPD, the most memorable theme, and something I say very often for no reason, would be Jesus, he's the app for that. Then I joined the lay as we were onward to greater. And here we are, currently, called to be living a global witness ministry that transforms, transcends, and liberates. As we soar to greater and higher heights, now, now, we are supposed to be living a global witness ministry that transforms, transcends, and liberates in the midst of a global pandemic and through the remnants, through sadness, anxiety, depression at an all-time high, through an economic crisis, through world wars loading, now was the time? How could we do it? How should we do it? How would we do it? We would just do it. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. just do it. They didn't hear you. Turn to the other one and say, neighbor, neighbor. Just, do just do it. How do we live a global witness ministry that transforms, transcends, and liberates? We just have to do it. If you have your Bibles, meet me in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. I'll give y'all a little time. Give y'all a little time. Luke chapter 4. Verses 18 through 19. And it reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Won't you bow your heads and close your eyes? To the God of miracles, signs and wonders we believe in your power lord hide me behind your cross today so that it is all of you and none of me lord i pray that this word and this message touches the heart of at least one person lord i pray that we leave this place encouraged and able to just do it lord lord you did it for us and you keep doing it so with that we can just do it in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Family, if you were to really sit back and think about it, this theme is profound. It is powerful, and I believe even others that aren't in the lay organization could benefit by joining us on this journey. In the ministries and organizations they are involved in and in their everyday life as a believer by getting up and just doing it. Living a global, not just here locally, at Antioch or at St. Philip, not Stone Mountain or Atlanta, but not domestically, but globally. Witness, one who attests their belief in Christ and his teachings. Ministry, service to God and to other people in his name that transforms profound change and form from one stage to the next. This concept of transformation flows from an intensely personal relationship with God, transcends to exist above an independent form, to rise above, surpass, succeed, liberates, freedom from oppression, the biblical invitation to abundant life and unconditional love. As I dug deeper, and deeper, it became more evident that this was more than just a thing. This was a call. 
this meant as the lay and as a people, we really needed to get in the field and get active. It's time to take a new route, time to get creative, time to go about things in a new way, time to be inclusive, time to adjust, time to realize that this was all a part of the plan, God's plan, and we are to do it by any means necessary through Christ. This is the start of a revolution. We have to step out of our comfort zones, out of our local churches and organizations. It's time to unite and demonstrate. We are to be clear and concise with our message. Keeping God first, Jesus at our center, and the Holy Ghost in the midst, it's time to just do it. Now, I know some of you are saying, Amy, is this a Nike ad? <laughs> well, y'all, this can apply to whatever we aspire to do. How can we live a global witness ministry that transforms, transcends, and liberates? Well, I have three little points that could help lead the way. Three things that could help any of us just do it. Firstly, you have to put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. One of my favorite choir directors, the late Kevin Lemons of Kevin Lemons and Higher Calling, would always say this phrase, as his choir would be singing heaven down and the congregants would be praising, he would always tell us to put our weight on it. <laughs> Meaning to take control and make it ours. Whatever we were believing God for or trying to achieve, we have to put our hands on it. We have to put our hands on it, both individually and as a collective. We can't just expect it to happen. Faith without works is what? Yeah. Faith without works is what? Yeah. We have to work together for this common goal. Colossians 3 and 23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not human masters. We have to put our weight on it. We say we want young adults. We say we wanna grow our organizations. We say we wanna unify our families. Young adults, we say we wanna sit at the table. We say we wanna transform, transcend, and liberate. Is this all talk? Or are we actively putting in the work? Is this personal for us? Are we willing to help others when they can't pull their weight? Are we putting our weight on it? You cannot witness from home. Ministry happens more than just Sundays. Transformation, transcendence, and liberation cannot happen overnight. Will it be easy? No. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus is being tested. He is actively being tested as he is in these synagogues trying to proclaim the word. The devil is right there as he is trying to do what he is called to do. There were afflictions on every side. The devil was doing everything in his power to get Jesus to stray. But what did he do? Through it all, he kept preaching, he kept sharing. What am I saying? There will be tests. There will be trials. But don't allow them to stop you. Auntie Lois, the devil will straight up try you. But you can't stop putting your weight on it. If Jesus can do it, we can too. Put your weight on it and just do it. Secondly, now this is my favorite point. We have to adapt. We have to adjust. We have to be like water. I love music, y'all. Love music. I'm always at a concert. There's the Apostle Paul, and then there's my Apostle Paul, PJ Morton. PJ Morton and Stevie Wonder have this little song called be like water, meaning to be flexible in both mind and body. 
While just do it, we need to make sure we have the ability to change and adapt to the circumstances we are put into. Water is mentioned 722 times in the Bible, so much that it occurs more than faith, more than hope, more than prayer, more than worship. And this is according to Duke University. Water is a gift from God, the most beautiful element. God is water. His words are like water. Water is healing. Water is necessary to our health as humans and Christians. Water is so essential to life that it was created on the first day. Water connects us globally. Water transforms. Water transcends. Water liberates. And most importantly, water adjusts. Why wouldn't we want to be like water? One thing we as humans are good for are remin are remin is reminiscing on the past and how things used to be. We get so caught up at looking at the past that we can't see the future. What worked in 2000 might not work in 2023. We want things to go our way. I know it's a few of you my way or the highway type of people, but you know. <laughs> we want things to go our way, forgetting God. We worry about things we can't control. God is in control. Obstacles will be in our way. They won't block us. When the elevator to the top is out of order, we will take the stairs. We are to be like water. So I know some of you are saying, Amy, what are you saying? What are you saying? Well, laity, people of God, we must not bend nor break. We must be steadfast and unmovable believers. However, we are to pivot. Change with the circumstance. We are to adjust to whatever comes our way to adapt. Whether that's being still and quiet like the quiet waters, or having to stand up and let our voice be heard like the crash of a storm. Family, 2024 will be a year of major change. In the AME Church, in the 6th District, the United States, our local cities, our personal lives, everywhere. As the transformers, the transcenders, and the liberators, we will adapt. Because no matter the president, no matter the bishop, we still have to live a global witness ministry. We have been called to do this. Just do it. Be like water, always adapting and adjusting. And finally, my third point. Try again. Now, some of you are saying, well, Miss Amy, I put my weight on it. I've been like water, or I've adjusted, I've adapted. Now what? Well, according to Thomas H. Palmer's teacher's manual, till a lesson you should heed, try, try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Somebody missed it, somebody missed it. Some of us younger folks, we missed that. So for our younger ones, according to our good sis, Aaliyah, now if at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. Try again, and again, and again, and again. It won't always be easy. Failure is a necessary part of process. Prophet, we won't always get that W on the first try. Every time you attempt, you get better. You learn ways not to do it. You progress. The price of success is hard work. 
it may hurt. You may think, this is pointless. But you know what? You keep going. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. It is so easy to lose the original plot of the movie. How many movies have we seen where we were just like, now what, what's going on? What, what were we supposed to be watching? What's, what's happening? It's so easy to lose the original plot of the movie. We get distracted. Life starts lifing. Sister Shirley starts tripping. <laughs> but as long as God grants us with the ability to wake up another day, we are capable of trying again and again and again and again and again until it works because it will work. Just trust in God. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything, 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 everything's gonna be all right. We're gonna be all right. If we say we are committed to this call, when all else fails, try again. Just do it. Put your weight on it. Just do it. Adapt, adjust, be like water, just do it. We've decided, we're committed to achieve this. We will succeed. Knowing that you are never alone, keep preaching, keep teaching, keep empowering, keep spreading the good news, keep praying, keep believing, keep trusting God. Whatever you do, don't quit. Family, I call you to leave it all on the floor. Leave it all on the floor. As you live a global witness ministry, that transforms, transcends, and liberates. Lace up those Nikes. Lace up those Nikes, Daniel. Get in the field, get active, and just do it. As I leave you today, I pray that the Lord will bless you that he will protect you, shine his light upon you, and show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do, and light will shine on you on the road ahead of you. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Without Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. Because on that Friday, Oh, on that Friday, Jesus decided to bow his head and die and give us the ability to just do it. But then on that Sunday, oh my God, on that Sunday, on that Sunday, on that blessed Sunday, he got up. He got up. He got up and further gave us the ability to just do it. Do it, do it, do it. Thank you so much. Amen, praise the Lord everybody. Amen. Let's just do it. Amen. I'm going to give somebody, someone in here right now an opportunity. That's all any of us need is an opportunity, right? So those of you who can, stand on your feet as we give an invitation of Christian discipleship for someone to make that step come forward and give their life to Christ. It's been said, I can't say it any better, 
Just do it. Take one step at a time. Come forward and let somebody know right here today that you want to give your life to Christ. Anyone here? Anyone here right now, not saved, not sure, but you don't want to leave here like that. You want to let us know that you want to give your life to Christ. Anyone here right now, if you have a friend or neighbor that you know would like to make that step, step forward and give their life to Christ, just encourage somebody near you if you, if you know them like that. Let them know you'll walk with them if it's necessary. They need someone to walk with them. Say, I'll walk with you. Sometimes discouraged. Are you here? But not defeated. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, thank you, Amy, for allowing the Lord to use you. And, and, and we thank God that you're allowing the Lord to use you before you are used up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't that a good thing? Amen. Now, Lord, will use us any time. We get ready. Any time. Any time is a good time. Are you here? Anyone here? Okay, maybe, maybe that's not, not what you want to do yet. Maybe it's not give your life to Christ. Maybe you're looking for a church home, a faith community. To work there out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. All that so means is that you want to be accountable in your faith. Some Even though we are Christians, we, we, we join faith communities for accountability. The church don't save us. The building, the people around, don't I save us. Believe. But being around other saved people help us to be accountable. Amen. Amen. Anyone need that accountability, a faith community? We welcome you here right now at Antioch AME Church. Anyone want to just do it? Maybe, maybe that's that's not what you need right now. But I'm going to make this assumption, and I know I'll be correct. All of us need prayer. I'm not going to ask you whether you need it or not. I don't know why we ask folks, do you need prayer? Yes, we need it. I'm going to answer for you. And I want you right where you are right where you are. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't even have to come to the altar. I want you to touch and agree right, right where you are. Whether you're here, in here, or there virtually, wherever you are, touch and agree with us right now as we pray for you and for us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, here we are, oh God. Once again, standing in need of prayer. God, we know that you are the answer. That's why we got our heads up, looking to the hills from which comes our help. Our help comes from you, O oh Lord. And right now, O oh God, whatever we stand in, need of we offer it to you we, we open ourselves up to, to you Lord be it health issues we declare by your stripes we're healed not just according to the doctor's diagnosis or prognosis or even how we feel but according to your word we declare by your stripes we're healed. We declare your protection over our lives and our families and friends and loved ones. No weapons formed against us 
shall prosper. Oh, God. Now, Lord God, we declare your healing, your protection. Now, Jesus, help us as your people to understand the importance of each other. Help us, oh God, to understand and realize that we are all our brothers and sisters keeper. That we're in this together. And we get to see you, oh God. Not just standing alone, but together. We shall see you. Help us, oh God, to continue to press our case as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now I'm getting ready to put it back into the laity hands. Amen. We thank God for our president. The, uh, amen. The best president in the whole world, right here at Anarchy Avenue Church, Sister Leslie Vaughn. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your leadership. And we thank God for uh, our, uh, our six Episcopal District president who resides also at Antioch AME Church. And then, you know, we still, this show, no, still in high cotton with uh, our late president of the Atlanta East District, Sister Carolyn James. And, and then we just have all these great dignitaries of laity and uh, these legends. Amen. If, all y'all legends, the Curries and the Birds and the Fords. I mean, you know, they just all over the place. And we just thank you. We thank God for our own lay organization right here at Antioch AME Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, lay organization, for giving us a great day and giving us a great speaker. Let's give Amy another hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We put the task on Amy early this morning that the pastor need to be saved. And, and she accomplished her task. Thank you, Amy. God bless you. Amen, Sister Liz. Oh, I feel like you're a daughter of mine. Amy, will you please stand? You didn't have to answer the call because I now know you don't answer calls. <laughs> I'm gonna text you from now on. But you did. I wanted you to know that I did listen to you when we had our first conference meeting after coming back from Biennial. I'm hoping today, I see some young people up there, I'm hoping today <laughs> that we will be encouraged to have more of our Today Church that's age 18 to 35, will come and be a part of our lay organization. She's 26, y'all, and she brought a powerful word. I knew she was going to do it, but she did it. And so we did not pay you, but this will just be some little spending money <laughs> as you travel to do what you will to bring more young people to Christ and to this great lay organization of our Connectional global ministry. Thank you. God bless. And before we stand to do our lay benediction, I just wanted to recognize our lay organization. If you would please stand. All members of the organized lay organization, please stand. Amen. Amen. And now I would like the clergy to please stand. I want y'all to stay standing, because we're about to go. Stay standing. All the clergy, thank you very much. So everybody else that is seated, you're a part of the lay organization. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Lay benediction, we will sing. Amen? Y'all didn't stand, because I know y'all not. <laughs>